Hello guys, welcome to the Lee Chappy YouTube channel. I hope everyone is doing okay today. I just want to say a massive thank you for everyone who tuned in to the last one. Um, basically, the last one's gonna be, the last one was completely different to what any of the others are gonna be. But it, I was just kind of trialing things out, um, you know, making sure it was all gonna go smoothly. But yeah, today I'm gonna be doing um, a kind of like score um, predictions for the games coming up today. Um, and uh, also, I'm going to obviously go through the, the last scores from the last game week. So, yeah, let's get straight into the the first score that I'm going to be speaking about. And that is Everton 1, Chelsea 0. Um, yeah, so basically, the game was a very good game to watch. Although it wasn't that high scoring, it was just uh, the 1-0 to Everton. Um, both teams were attacking a lot. Um, Everton were definitely using the counter-attack technique with their um, you know 28 possession compared to the 72% of Chelsea. The passing again shows that with Chelsea having 639 and Everton having 241 passes. Um, it just shows, obviously, the different uh, playing styles between the two teams and um, Everton using the counter-attack, obviously, and it working. Um, yeah, so Everton had nine shots to Chelsea's ten, which shows how equal the game was. It just um, also showed that Everton was a lot more clinical during the game um, with their managing to, you know, get their goal in. Now I was going to leave that there with the uh, just just saying that uh, obviously they've they've lost that first game, but they've also then um, went and lost to Wolves yesterday two one with a late Neto goal. So yeah, they've lost two on the bounce now Chelsea, and um, yeah it seems like their team's starting to fold a little bit. They're not looking um, as bright as they did at the start of the season, but that's again is uh, very dependent on the teams that they've been playing. They've only been really playing um, bottom of the table teams luckily with their standings, so, um, yeah, now they're starting to play some, some decent teams, they're starting to see, like, they're folding, but they're now sitting in fifth with 22 points. Really, it was all just dependent um, on the Gilfie Sigurdsson penalty, uh, and when I say clinically with um, Everton, I mean, obviously, putting the penalty away, they were just more clinical, they took the chance um, of the penalty, and, and they grabbed, and they grabbed the 1-0. Um, other than that, there wasn't some huge chances. They were both playing a really good attacking football. It just didn't really seem like um, either of the team were up for it, really. But um, Everton got the win with the Gilfie Sigurdsson penalty. And yeah, that's left Chelsea in a bit of a, a mess now, losing to Wolves as well. So the next fixture I'm going to be speaking about is Crystal Palace 1, Tottenham 1. So yeah, the league leaders have been um, stopped in uh, some respects with their uh, winning ways. Um, to a draw against Crystal Palace. This was just after Roy Hodgson smashed West Bromwich Alvin 5-1 with a Zaha masterclass. Um, yeah, basically, they're on a, a good run of form at the minute and um, I wouldn't put it past them to get another win against their opponents this week. Um, but yeah, Tottenham just uh, seemed not like themselves. Um, I think Crystal Palace shut, shut them out very well. They kind of... Um, Stopped the the Kane Son duo to uh, you know a certain aspect, but they obviously still managed to get the goal and assist, which seems to be the story of everyone's lives. Um, playing against Tottenham this uh, year, and um, yeah, can anyone stop stop them? Do you think that they're the most deadliest duo in football right now? I mean, it's a a massive statement to talk about Tottenham like that, but um, yeah, do do you think that they're the deadliest duo right now. Do you think they're one of the some of the best um players playing together right now? But um yeah, let me let me know. Um but yeah, there was a it was a really difficult game for, for Tottenham. Um Crystal Palace had a lot of shots compared to Tottenham as well. Well when I say a lot, had a few. Uh Crystal Palace had sixteen shots to Tottenham's fourteen, five of them being on target, and six of them being on target for Spurs. Um, they had forty two possession, uh, forty two percent possession compared to uh, Spurs fifty eight possession. Uh, their passes wasn't that far off of Spurs either, with a uh, three hundred and forty four passes to four hundred fifty seven, and the pass accuracy was exactly the same, sitting on seventy nine percent. Um, yeah. So when I say that, uh, you know, Crystal Palace were dealing with Spurs attack very well. The match seemed to have an endless amount of fouls. Um, especially on Crystal Palace side with um them committing 15 fouls during that game there was uh two cards involved um one for Crystal Palace and one for Tottenham and uh yeah Tottenham committed 11 fouls so you know it was a very very stop start game which i think was one of the reasons to why it was just a pre uh you know one just a normal 1-1 one -one draw it wasn't anything special but for Crystal Palace to you know stop Tottenham the the league leaders who are actually on amazing form recently it's you know, quite a shock fixture, and um, 
yeah, good luck to Crystal Palace. And obviously, do you think Spurs can win the league or do you think they're going to bottle it again? Um, I'll leave that one to you. I'm, I'm guessing uh, Lee's um, you know, voice on that will be very similar to what mine would be. And that would be that we don't want Tottenham to win, but they're doing well and you can't fault them playing well. And uh, yeah, good luck to both of them. Okay, so the next fixture I'm going to be speaking about is unfortunately for some, and I'm sure Danny is going to be in the chat right now, and I don't think he's going to want to hear this one, but uh, Burnley, yeah, that's right, bloody Burnley, coming up with a 1-0 win against the Arsenal. Um, yeah, <laughs> wow. I remember doing the watch-along with Lee um, while this one was going on, obviously with Leicester beating Brighton 3-0 at that time. Um yeah, Burnley were were beating Arsenal. We were so shocked um, to hear that Aubameyang finally stopped his uh, goal drought. Um, yeah, so good for him. Um, you know, it will be good for his confidence. And uh, I can't wait to see him back on the score sheet a bit more again. But uh, yeah, let's get into the match facts a little bit more. Um, obviously, the, the massive turning point in that game, I believe, was the Granite Xhaka uh, sending off. So it seemed like when I watched the replay back, because I didn't watch the game, I was doing the, the Leicester watching on with Lee, um, that Granite Xhaka kind of choke slammed or grabbed his throat, kind of went for that kind of thing. Um, and when I was uh, reading about the press conference, Arteta defended him, saying it was just passion. Uh, so do you think that's right? Do you think that Xhaka kind of got away with it there and the manager should have been a bit more hard on him? Because when Pepe did that uh, headbutt, Arteta was having none of it, and obviously he's, Pepe's had the mighty wrath of Arteta now. And uh, do you think it's a bit um paper crissy from Arteta or or not? Because for me, I think Chaka's personally was was worse than the Pepe headbutt. Cause it Pepe's headbutt wasn't really a headbutt. It's kind of like he just stroked the opposition with his head rather than a headbutt. But obviously, it looked like he was going in for it, and uh, I think he kind of realized that he was going to get in massive trouble if he did. Which is why there's controversy, because people are saying, if you're going to go headbutt someone, headbutt them properly, like Zinedine Zidane. But, um, yeah, Pepe had none of it. He just wanted to stroke the player rather than headbutt him. But that's another story anyway. Um, so, yeah, do you think the, the Xhaka red card was, uh, you know, you know, a red card? Or do you think it was uh, not reasonable? But personally, I think it is a red card. And I think Arteta should be, you know, having words with him, because... This was the, the ex-club captain, or I don't know whether he's still captain. I don't think it is, obviously. I think it's Aubameyang, but... Um, yeah, this was the ex-captain. Do you think he should have a start in the place, in the team? I don't think so, but yeah, the the team um, played just pretty terrible. It was just really average from Arsenal. They they really didn't have any attacking spirit or anything. Um, they had 18 shots, but out of those 18 shots from Arsenal, they only had six on target which just shows, really, what the Arsenal team are going through. And um, it is sad, I suppose, to see such a big giant of a team to be doing so bad and, temp you know, possibly going into the uh, relegation zone if they carry it on. I mean, imagine Arsenal in, in the championship, but that, that's crazy. I mean, yeah, wow. But, um, yeah, Burnley had 10 shots, and out of those 10 shots, they had two on target. Um, obviously... They didn't score their goal. Um, Aubameyang did. So, you know, may maybe they maybe Aubameyang is trying to, you know, help them about a bit. I mean, Burnley is struggling a bit, obviously. Arsenal are as well, but maybe he's a secret Burnley fan or something. I'm, I'm not too sure. Burnley committing 11 fouls to Arsenal's five. So, yeah, that, that was near to the end of the game. I remember when Arsenal were attacking, they just started chopping all the players' legs down when they were getting close because, obviously, they wanted to defend the win. But, yeah, so, um, I don't know. Out of those um, 11 fouls, they only got one yellow card and Arsenal committed five fouls and got two. So, yeah, could you blame it on the ref? Uh, I don't think so. I think Arsenal just played really terrible, to be fair. And, um, yeah, they're sitting at a nice 15th in the league right now, which I'm sure every Arsenal fan in the world would love to hear. Um, Burnley are 17th, so, you know, uh, they are only, like, three or four points ahead, uh, below Arsenal, sorry. So, yeah, maybe Aubameyang was doing Burnley a favour. Maybe he didn't want to see them go down and... Uh, save them a bit but do you think um Arsenal or Burnley are going to be staying up or do you think they're both going to be staying up um, personally I can't see Burnley going down because they're just one of those teams that are really annoying and not every single team can beat them okay so now is my time for the predictions for match day 13 Wolves and Chelsea have played and Man City and West Brom have played I'm pretty sure you'll all know the scores for both of them I'll cover them on the next um roundup I do 
But yeah, they were both pretty shock results, to be fair to you. So yeah, I, I can't wait to cover both of them, really, on the next show. But yeah, so we've got Arsenal-Southampton today, Leicester City-Everton today, Le- Leeds United-Newcastle today, Fulham-Brighton today, and Liverpool-Tottenham today, West Ham-Crystal Palace today, Aston Villa-Burnley tomorrow, and Sheffield United versus Man United tomorrow. Right, so for the prediction for Arsenal-Southampton, right, I'm going to go with a Southampton 2, Arsenal 1. Um, yeah, so that's what I think it's going to be. I think Adams will get on the score sheet and I probably think um, Ings will get an assist or get on the score sheet as well. I don't think um, Southampton will keep a clean sheet and it will probably be an Arsenal go ahead first because they're not going to want to lose so their momentum is going to be massive. But can you really blame me for you know going with the team that's playing better football in the top four football, can you imagine Southampton potentially being in the Champions League? It's just ridiculous this season is. And um, yeah, I, I, that's just what I think. Okay, so now I'm moving on to my next prediction. And that's Leicester City versus Everton, the big one for this channel. And that is the reason for why I'm going to play it safe. Um, I'm going to, I'm reckon it's going to be, it's, it's tricky because they're, they're playing really good football. Obviously, Everton's form's kind of dropped off recently, but I don't know. Let, let me know in the comments right now. Everyone spam spam your score predictions. I want to see if, if we're going to get similar. All right, I, I reckon it's going to be a Leicester City 2 and Everton 2. I reckon it's going to be a draw. 2-2. Two, two. I reckon it will be a draw. They're, they're both playing really good football, and... I just can't I can't take it away from either of them. So that's what I think. I reckon it'll be a 2-2 draw. I think Vardy will get on the sheet, Calvert-Lewin will get on the sheet. And I, I can't I don't want to predict the next two scores because it could be anyone. But yeah, that that's what I think. Okay, so next up is Leeds United versus Newcastle and I'm going to be honest with you, I don't know much about either. All I know is that Leeds United are just amazing at attacking. So in that respect, compared to Newcastle, although they've been they've been good this season, I'm going to go with a, a 2-1 Again, Leeds United versus Newcastle. I think Leeds will be getting their, their two goals and Newcastle will be getting their one. Um, just because of the, the pure attacking from Leeds, um, I think they'll just overwhelm Newcastle's defence and manage to come on on top. So yeah, that, that's, that's what I think. Okay, so up next is Fulham versus Brighton. So Fulham, whose form has just suddenly came out of nowhere and they're looking like they, they could win the title... Um, and then there's Brighton, who, you know, they, they've just been a, a steady team in the league. I think it will be a 1-0 to Brighton. Um, I think Fulham's form will just, you know, they, they can't keep this, you know, shock performances up. And I think Brighton will just outclass them. Um, yeah, that, that I just think it will be quite a boring game. Um, don't get me wrong. They they could, you know, pull out something, um, you know, incredible because their defences, both on, of them are not great. So they could just be a high-scoring game, but I don't think it will be. So, yeah, that's why I think 1-0 to Brighton. Okay, so up next is possibly the best game for this game week, and that is Liverpool versus Tottenham. Yeah, this could be the big one. This could be the deciding factor for the league title, um, although that's probably a massive lie because this league is very strange this year. So anything could happen. I mean, Southampton could possibly win the league. Who knows? But, yeah, predictions, um, another tough one. But I think uh, Liverpool will win, um, even though Tottenham have done very well so far. I think it will be a 3-1 to Liverpool. Um, I think Son will score, Salah will score, Mane will score. Um, but I don't want to predict the last one because, I, again, I think that could be anyone. I think it will be a random scorer. But they're the scorers who I think. But I think it will be 3-1. I think Liverpool would just uh, come out of nowhere and suddenly just show um, you know, what, what they've been missing. So yeah, that's that's why I think. Okay, so we've got the final three teams playing this week, and that is West Ham, Crystal Palace, Aston Villa, Burnley, and Sheffield United, Man United. All right, so West Ham, Crystal Palace tonight. Um, I think Crystal Palace will. This is another tough one because their form's been great. Um, I think it will be a two-one. I think there's going to be a lot of two ones this week for some reason. I do think that. Um, two-one Crystal Palace to to West Ham. Um, yeah, I think that that's the most reasonable thing to go for. Um, yeah, just because their form's been been great recently, they've been scoring as goals, and uh, yeah, go for it. 
Right, so up next is Aston Villa Burnley. So I think Aston Villa will beat Burnley very comfortably. I think it will be a 2 0 win. Um, Greenish will get on the score sheet, um, probably get an assist as well. But yeah, I think it'll be pretty pretty easy for Aston Villa against Burnley. Um, although they obviously pulled off their, their nice win against Arsenal, um, they just played absolutely terrible against them. I don't even understand how they managed to um, to win that game. Obviously, it was always depending on the Aubameyang goal. But yeah, I don't think Burnley will win. They, they're just shambles at the minute. Um, so yeah, I think Aston Villa will walk all over them. It'll be a 2-0 win, comfortably. And finally... For the last game, um, which is tomorrow at 8 o'clock, Sheffield United versus Man United. So this is my team. Right, um, so we've had a bit of a dodgy uh, couple of weeks. We've been kicked out of the Champions League and smashed into the Europa League. Um, we've obviously been battered by RB Leipzig. Um, you know, we had a terrible game against Manchester City, which was a complete ball fest of 0-0. But I think we'll beat Sheffield United uh, very comfortably. I think it'll be 3-0. Um, I think Bruno will get a goal and a couple of assists. And I think Marcus Rashford will find his name on the score sheet as well. So yeah, that that's my um that's my final predictions for the for the uh game week that we are facing this week um midweek um so yeah that's what I think. All right, so finally before I leave you guys to it um I've already held you up for like what seventeen minutes now nearly um so yeah finally I just wanted to say a massive thank you for everyone who stuck uh to the preview or the the premiere sorry my bad uh, my words are getting a bit jumbled up now because I've been speaking for so long. <laughs> but yeah so thank you to everyone who's uh, stuck by um, drop a like and subscribe um, and yeah I'm sure I'll, I'll be speaking to you a lot on the next watch along um, obviously on the next show that I do so yeah uh, take it easy stay safe and I'll see you next time in a bit <laughs>